Hello guys, welcome back. This is the seventh video in the Databricks free edition series. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the Databricks gene. If you are new to the channel, I have created videos related to Databricks free edition. Please consider watching others before this so that you get to know what Databricks has to offer in the free edition. If you find the videos helpful, please consider subscribing or just give a share subscribe whatever you want to do so that it motivates me to create similar kind of contents in the future now let's get into the topic of this particular video so this is the databricks journey i'm going to cover databricks journey in this video and the next video will be about the dashboards but now let's go into the journey this is the journey and if you are completely new to Jenny, instead of going online and searching what Databricks Jenny is all about, we can utilize the knowledge from previous videos. In the previous video, I talked about Databricks Assistant. Let's open the Databricks Assistant from here. And then we can ask what is this Jenny all about? I can say what is Databricks Jenny? Just like this, right? then it will point us to some documentations and so on so we can explore more about the genie here it says explore genie features learn about genie space set up genie and so on databricks genie is an ai power feature designed to facilitate natural language data exploration and interaction for business terms it allows users to ask questions and receive relevant sql queries and visualization based on their data it leverages comments and metadata from Unity catalog data sources along with user provided instructions, example queries to interpret questions and generate accurate results. It uses a compound AI system that combines the AI models, retrieval, ranking, personalization systems to understand and organizations data and uses patterns, right? It is, a, it is one of the part of Databricks AI powered features, which also include Databricks assistant for coding and dashboard building and auto-generated table documentations. You get the idea, okay, this is how the journey looks like, right? You can visualize the picture of it. And if you want more, you can see here, if you go to these three citations, you can say Databricks AI powered and it will take us to the actual documentations from Databricks. The idea behind this is you don't need to leave the UI and go into the internet and search it, right? We can use the existing tools in the Databricks to get additional information as we progress. There is one example that is already being provided by Databricks. Let's briefly go into that so that you get additional idea of how it looks like. I can just click this here. You can see on the left side, let me make the screen a little bit bigger. On the left side, you can see this is the UI that it looks like. And by the way, just to understand that in order to run this, we need to have this warehouse being started. When we start doing something, it will be automatically started because it's over. on the right side, you can see there is this new chat history. If you have some history about this one, there is the configure. This is the important part in the journey. Here you can have the data that you want to power for this particular journey. Here you can provide the instructions. Here you can see there is the instructions being provided for this particular journey space. And there are some SQL queries also being provided. It says here SQL queries and functions add example queries that Jenny can learn from. Whenever you provide these kind of examples, Jenny will take from here and it will progress. This is how it is shown here. And in the settings, you can just go here. This is the description's name. What is the default warehouse that you want to use? There are some of the sample questions which appears here. As you can see, which products sold the most units? This kind of sample questions can already be provided when you create the journey space. And on the top, there is also the monitoring. We can go this when we create our own. And then there is the possibility to share this. If you go to these three doors, there is also the benchmarks. You can clone this space. You can move to trash, send feedback, and so on. If you go to benchmarks, you can see we don't have any evaluations done for now. But here you can see this is the questions which a product generated. This is the SQL query already provided. You can see here some of the questions already there. Yeah, this is how we can do. But now we don't have any evaluation. Let's not go into there. But now let's close this one. 
I will go back into the genie. Let's create our own genie, right? I just want to show you some examples before exploring so that you get the idea of what it is all about before jumping directly into the demo itself. That is how I prefer. I hope you find it helpful. Now let's go into the new button here on the top right corner. I will click new. And now the first step is to connect your data, right? Here it says Jenny space empower you to uncover meaningful insights from your data. Just upload your data set, provide instructions and simply ask your data questions. From here, this is only for you. All catalogs are shown here. Let's work with the titanic data set that I uploaded in my previous video. I can just click this titanic data sets. You can have multiple data sets also being selected like this. You can see here titanic. There is a forecast daily. But for now, let's just go with the titanic one. I will say create. Once I create this, you can see there is already a space being created. And as soon as the data is uploaded, now there are many things happening under the hood. That means AI is kicking in now. This is the new space. By when I just created this, the warehouse already started, is running now. And you can see here, there are some of the questions already being suggested based on the data sets. I haven't provided anything. It says explain the data set, what is the average age of passengers, what is the distribution of fares paid by passengers and so on. Meaning that under the hood, AI has already went through the data that I have in my catalog and it is suggesting sample questions and you can have more sample questions here. This is in the configure part. This is the first step. Here you can see data. We have already one data. As I said you before also, we can have multiple data sets as we progress. But in this case, as the Titanic data set is not related to any other data set here, we are just going to work with this particular data set. And here it says review two suggested queries already, right? We have found two queries from your workspace that might have helped improve the quality of the JNE space. Let's review this. So you can see here, select all from Titanic where P class equals to one. And this is the source SQL query. It went into my SQL query, saved query. Just to show you, it went into the queries part here. I have saved two queries. You can see here, Titanic data set exploration. Here you can see select all from Titanic where P class equals to one. That is already now refreshed into this new space here. As you can see here, this is what is shown. Let's accept this because this is what I wanted to be there. And here it says the first 1000 records. This is also great. We can accept this. Now we have two different queries as the example. If you go into this SQL queries, those two queries are now here. And that is done by the AI under the hood, reading my SQL queries saved in my workspace and suggesting me to do it. Right, this is really good. Now let's go into the instructions. Here you can see there is no instructions being provided. This is the example instruction here. We can say this is the Titanic um, data set. I will be asking questions related to it. Just, okay, you can say here provide answer just from the data provided this is simple instruction but you get the example provided before you can have as much as instructions as you want to to provide to jenny i can say save let's recap we have the data instructions sql queries as examples now let's go into the settings in the settings it says title we don't have any title what we can say here is we can say titanic data exploration space whatever you want to give it and then now here is the description this is the titanic data set and so on i can just copy this for now and i will just paste it here but now here it went away already because i didn't save this i will say here titanic data exploration space but you get the point this is the description what it is all about but in the instructions you can provide 
how the LLM behave and so on. For this demonstration purpose, I am just showing you the simple what this is Titan data set and so on. So here is the sample questions. You can see this is already being provided. So it's good for me right now, but you get the point. I can just save this. In the settings, we have the default warehouse because we can create uh, other warehouses in the free edition. It's already being chosen. We give the Titanic name. There is the description. In the context, we have the data, the SQL queries and the instructions. Now, what you can do, you can go here and ask the questions. Let's click one of these things. Let's say that I'm completely unknown to this data set. I just want to explain the data set for me. You can see what tables are there and how are they connected. That is what it was under the hood in you know, the questions. Here it says there is one table variable workspace titanic data set and titanic. By the way, this is the three label hierarchy of the Unity catalog, right? This table captures data from a specific voice detailing passenger demographic and travel information. It includes columns such as this and this. There are no explicit connections to other tables as only one table is provided. This is what I mentioned you before also. We haven't connected these to other tables, right? I can say fix it or is this correct? Yes, is this correct? I give the feedback which is thank you for the feedback. Now you can see here it says what is the survival rate of the passengers on their class and other questions also how does the survival rate differ from male and female passengers I can just say okay go on because I now have the questions being suggested for me there now you can see here it is just providing me the answer now you see the power of the Jenny here when I ask the question there is also possibility to copy the link or delete or you can even edit the question and here it says this analysis provides the average survival rates of this, this, this. So it is providing this. It shows from where the data is taken. Two rows. So there is this column here, sex column and the survival rate. Male and female. You can see the survival rates here. You can even add an instruction. Save responses as example SQL query. It took my SQL query which was being saved. Let's say you find this helpful. You can show the code. It says select this and these things. I can hide the code. Here you can copy CSV, refresh the data, regenerate the response and so on. And let's say that I want to add this as an instruction. I can just click this one. You can see it is being added as the instruction. And here in the SQL queries part, you can see it is being populated here. If I go back, now we have three different SQL queries provided as the context for this particular space. It knows what kind of SQL queries it needs to generate in the future. I hope that is clear. It already provided us the pie chart. So here survival rate by six. And here you can download as PNG. And here is the collapse. You can just say, okay, I don't want to see it here. Or here, this is the edit visualizations. This is really good that automatically is Databricks Jenny said that based on the question you have, the answer, I think pie chart is the right visualization. But maybe you think, no, I don't want to go with the pie chart. Let's change it. You can just edit this. You can even provide the description. Here is the survival rate and so on. If you don't need, this is fine. And here you can choose other different kind of things. Let's say that I want to go with bar chart. Here you can see automatically when I filter or change the visualizations, it is reflected in the space itself. Just choose the one you want because later you can download this and share it with your colleagues. And you can even have this X axis, whatever you want to have. And if you, let's say that if you want to just have the display name different than this sex here, you can provide here or similarly, you can have other things also. Now let's see where did it went. Here is the edit here, here. And now the thing here is you can even change the colors. You don't like maybe this color. You can just go here and make it red or any, if you want to have the UI. Okay. This one, you can change from this. You can do all sorts of things right again 
uh, there are additional things tool tip labels if you don't want the labels you can just hide the labels and so on if you want more annotations if you want the horizontal whatever you want to do right these are the things that you can configure as you progress this kind of customization is also possible on top of the itself it says is this correct you can say request review you can say fix it you can say yes it's up to you let's say that for some reason you have something to request for review you can just click this request for review and add a comment for the space admin right they can then review this request do you want to fix it if you want to fix it here it says that values look off missing expected columns jenny made a upper definition wrong visualizations and so on you can just provide some of these or explain what is wrong with the responses and then submit and try again this is all up to you how you want to work with this you can go ahead and ask as many questions as you want but it's there is no point of me asking 10 different questions but you get the point how you can create the space configure it provide the settings ask questions change the visualizations and so on but now once this is done let's say that you want to see the history yeah here is the history here it says what tables are there and so on you can maybe want to create a new chart although you create a new chart here there is a history right so let's say that i want to have the average age of passengers you can see that the average age of passengers on the titanic is shown this is the kind of history that you can see already from here and also the monitoring part here this is also already a good feature because here you can see i'm asking what tables are there and what is the average age of the passengers this is the really good part that i ask the question here is the answer and what was called follow-up is these are the follow-up questions from here you can just see what are the follow-up questions being provided was this correct and so on right you can add the instructions code you can go to the conversations and so on or just a view from here by this way you can quickly see what was being asked from the monitoring tab itself and the good part of this is that you can have all sorts of things filtered by here there is the last 30 days you can choose the time here there is the rating positive just positive it will be filtered from there or negative it's filtered there is no negative comments and so on this is the request being requested or reviewed that is what we went through this is the user okay this way you can see all sorts of things and also the status is there pending failed completed and so on if i click completed yeah these are the three which are completed there might be some are failed so you can quickly go into the failed one and see what was the issue and then fix it right now i'm just using it for myself but in the future imagine that in a company you have someone create the space for you and many users are using it and they provided the feedback and you can come to this monitoring tab and see all the monitoring stops so that you get the point okay what is happening when users interact with this space that is all i wanted to cover in this particular video i hope now you get the idea how you can create the journey space how you can configure it provide context to the space and provide instructions to make the journey space smarter as you progress that's all for this video i hope you learned something new thank you for watching and see you in the next video